My name is Habiba, and this is a story time followed by a series of thoughts about religion. Typically, I avoid the subject because, you know, the internet can be a crazy place. This is my very multicultural family, my husband, Kenton, and our three children. And we live in North Carolina in the Triangle area, which is very culturally diverse. The USA is definitely home for me, but interestingly, I used to live in northern Nigeria with a very Muslim father and a large extended Muslim community while having a very Western Christian mother. It made for some confusing and often challenging times when it came to religion because to the outside world, I was Muslim and expected to behave as such, but at home, my mother lived like a Christian. My feelings towards Islam has changed as I have grown older, but as a child, I found it scary and very much forced upon me. Many years later in the USA, despite my upbringing, it was really easy marrying Kenton, a non-Muslim, non-black, half-Asian male, probably considered haram, I don't know. All I know is at that point, I did not care what people thought about me or my religion. Despite our superficial skin differences, Kenton and I had a lot in common because he also had parents that came from two different faiths and two different cultures. He had been exposed to Buddhism and also he was raised Christian. So we had a lot in common and in raising our kids, we decided that we were gonna focus on God and not necessarily push any particular religion on our children. As parents, we both understood that all the major religions have the same major principles like thou shall not lie or thou shall not steal, etc. We shared similar values such as our love for education and also a sense of spirituality and love of God. However, we were never a religious couple, but we kept an open mind knowing that there are good people from all over the world, from different faiths. And if you invited us to your church or your temple, we would often go. My career in medicine definitely made it challenging to go to church every Sunday. But as much as possible, we took the children to church. We would always get them dressed up and we would go to church. Now, living in a small town in the South, churches were either all black or almost all white. So it was really self-segregated. So as an immigrant with mixed American children, multicultural children, I definitely felt it was a bit of a challenge to find a church that felt like home or felt like we belonged. Thanks for watching. If you like, please comment and subscribe. And check out our other videos. Feel free to comment down below. <laughs> 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 Ooh, we left them behind <laughs> see that's what losing four pounds <laughs> giving me a little confidence oh lord jesus huh khalid's trying to kill me <laughs> all right so i'm gonna walk 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 and then jog 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 as the kids got older and went to high school and then college, I realized their reluctance to go to church. Whenever I would ask, can we go to church? It was always no. You can go mommy, but we're not interested. Then of course came the pandemic and understandably more and more people dropped out of the church or stopped going to worship in person. And for the purposes of this video, I may use the word church, but you can insert mosque or temple as you prefer. So the point is, like many other young Americans, my kids or young adults do not appear to be interested in church or really any serious organized religion. And so I felt as a parent that I must have done something wrong, but also I wanted to see why or understand why and what can I do about it and where can we go from here. So we'll delve into the why because I'm sure for every young adult, the reasons why they no longer are interested in church or not interested in religion is different. But I asked my young adults their specific reason, and this is what they said. One of my children said they didn't need to go to church to believe in God. And I do not disagree with that statement. However, one said that they were agnostic. I had to look up the word agnostic. 
<laughs> just to make sure I understood it correctly. And according to the dictionary, agnostic means that they are a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God or of anything beyond material phenomena, a person who claims neither faith nor disbelief in God. Basically, a person who has an uncertain or non-committal attitude towards something is another way to look at the word agnostic. One felt that they didn't feel going to church served any purpose, was no longer relatable or relevant to their life, and that most preachers were corrupt and it was just all a big show. So for the most part, despite my interest in going to church, my children were not interested. And as you know, as time progresses, everyone grows up, moves out, does different things with their lives. And as you also know, my mother moved from New York City to North Carolina. And she is not necessarily a religious person either. She always stressed the importance of God and prayer and being spiritual, but church was never really her thing or her routine. So I am also going to try to get her to go to church. Now, to be honest, since she's been in North Carolina, I believe she has been to a couple of churches, including one that I invited her to, Kenton and I invited her to, and that was fun, but we didn't go back. Now, Mariam, luckily for us, is home from school this weekend, so I feel like I have an opportunity to ask her again to come with us. As you know, Kareem graduated from college recently also, and he is working on his business, so I am also trying to get him to go to church with us. <laughs> so it's all about rallying each of the different children um, and trying to see if they can come. Now, Khalid, as you know, Khalid, yeah, he is in medical school, his first year of medical school, super stressed out, super busy. And so I really wasn't expecting him to agree to come to church. But luckily, I was shocked. He said, yes. He said, yes, sure, mommy, I'll come over for the weekend. So we're all going to church. Miracles do happen. <laughs> I was so excited. And despite my lack of sleep, we're going to church. Oh, nice. Is, is it linen? Yeah. Oh, it has pockets. It has pockets. Lovely. <laughs> is it sleeveless? <laughs> Are we ready to leave? Looking forward to seeing. It's up. I, that's what I stayed up to do. It's up. Your stuff. Uh, so I said, oh, so then you understand. We are very comfortable with people. Mine and that was what Linda had at the time. And like two weeks later, right. um, Lori, Denise, and it was Lori, Denise, and somebody else, three of them that had the same shirt. Mm -hmm. And that was um, because they all...
Mother, where are you? <laughs> yeah, a lot of Ethiopians. <laughs> yeah, did you see some Africans coming in? <laughs> so once you practice enough with the stethoscope and know what a heartbeat sounds like, it right? Like, Yo, it's freaking out. Heart palpitations or something. Like, everyone else feeling this? Everyone jumping up and down. Yeah, I was clapping. So see, we actually made it to church. All of us. My mother, my husband, three of my children, all of us on one day, despite living in separate places and having different schedules, we made it to church finally for the first time in years. So I was ecstatic, but really tired. So now we're heading towards Khalid's apartment. He has class tomorrow. He's already in serious student mode. As All I right, said, he's Khalidi. in med school, so he don't play. Giving a hug. <laughs> he's ready to get back to work. <laughs> now we're back at our house. Enjoy your day, Enjoy your day Thank you for church. Of course, thank you for <laughs> Like I said before, I don't often talk about religion because, you know, the internet can be a very harsh and judgmental place. Uh, everyone's got opinions, right? But we're adults here, and I feel like sharing. So why did it mean so much for me to see my family go to church or why did I want to go to church so bad well like so many adults I've been through a lot I mean I know most of the time you guys see me as this very optimistic bubbly person but I have my moments I'm not always that upbeat I stress out I worry I cry sometimes and I've been through a lot of tribulations and a lot of challenges over the years um, but I always remember that there is God's love and it's not about the love of all the material things or the love for the comfort he has given me, but because he has pulled me out of all of those horrible situations, those trenches. So many times I didn't know, you know, how things were going to work out, but somehow he managed to fix it. So anyway, going to church is just an opportunity to do something as a family, but also an opportunity to thank God. You know, I just feel like I can't live a life without acknowledging God and his power and his love for us and just reminding my family that when they go through something that they are not alone and that they should invite God into their life. So that's primarily the reason I really wanted to go to church because it's really hard to deal with burdens alone. and. I think, again, it's very important to invite God into your life and always to sort of reflect on how far you have come. Sometimes we pray to God only when we need something instead of, you know, taking a moment to say thank you for what we already have. You can't expect to be blessed further if you're always complaining, if you're always thinking about what next you need and what next you want instead of acknowledging so far how much God has given you or how much he has blessed you. Another big reason I really wanted to go to church was because I felt like I needed a reset. I needed to know that I wasn't going crazy or that I wasn't the only one feeling this way. But honestly, the world often feels like it has gone mad. I don't know about you, and I'm sure maybe someone out there feels the same, but there's so much negativity going on in the world today, and so much of us or so many people have lost that sense of ethics and values and God just seems to be missing in so much of what is happening. You know, so many people are focused on worshiping idols or worshiping other people or worshiping themselves instead of God. Um, I don't know how else to say it, but honestly, this is how I've been feeling. It's like, personally, a lot of what's going on in society does not reflect my values. And sometimes I'm concerned about what my children, even though they're young adults, but what my children are, you know, absorbing or what they're taking home with them. Um, I know that the educational system and a lot of what they're being taught in school is a lot different than what I learned in school. And some of it... I don't know. I don't know. It just doesn't always sit well with me. Now, I know I'm very blessed to have very intelligent children or very intelligent young adults 
They're also very, very analytical, very deep thinkers. And I think I just want them to know that it's important to be smart, but it's also important to recognize that being a good person, in my opinion, also involves recognizing that there is a higher power than you. And regardless of what religion you choose to practice or not practice, make sure God is at the center of your life. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but studies have actually shown plummeting importance of religion in the lives of Americans. A question was actually asked to people, is religion an important part of your life? And for majority of those people asked, especially the young people, apparently religion was no longer important to them. Now, I think it, I find this very disturbing, especially at a time when there is so much dysfunction that is being normalized, in my opinion. Now, again, I, um, you know, invite you to disagree with me. That's totally fine. You know, you can have your own opinion. But in my opinion, there is a lot going on that is just not in line with my values. That's where I'm going to put it. And what day is it tomorrow? Tomorrow's Sunday, which means it's Mother's Day, which means it's also the day I was What's wrong born. with your eye? I the sun. I don't know. I just get like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Look at my brown skin next no to hair. you. Huh? I got no hair? Of course I got hair. What do you mean? Oh, I thought you <laughs> yeah, were joking. I thought you were joking. I was like, He's going to the yeah, NIH. Yeah. You're going to the NIH, what, to study sickle cell? No, no, to do research. Where are you going? So you're still planning to go to med school? Yes. Why? Why torture yourself? Why torture How yourself? You say torture himself to exactly. him, but then say me, you're like, why don't I go to med school? Well, I don't know. I think so you're smarter. You're, 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 you're smarter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, on a more serious note, back to the subject of religion. Why is religion still very important to our society? Well, in my opinion, religion helps to give us a guideline of how to live life. Whether you're an adult, whether you're a young person, personally, I still feel like at a minimum, it is a guideline. So whether you are Muslim, whether you are Christian, whether you are Jewish, I believe religion, if followed correctly, is an important guideline of how to live your life. And then another reason why religion is still important to some is that it helps give them purpose. So for many, it's a sense of purpose. And also importantly, even for myself, it helps to give me hope. Religion helps to give people hope and faith and knowing that there is strength in prayer. I will never forget how as a young girl, I used to pray so hard, just praying to God ah, to change my circumstances, praying for things that just seemed so impossible and yet they all would come to pass. Religion teaches us the importance of meditation, rituals, worship, and I think it's an important guide to knowing what is right from wrong, what is holy, what is sacred, what is spiritual. Otherwise, people start making up their own rules, hiding behind, it is my right, it's because I can, I feel this way, it makes me feel good, it is what my heart desires. <laughs> you know, it's important to recognize that sometimes the heart can be wrong, especially in the absence of God. And even though it doesn't feel like it, especially nowadays, religion helps to promote unity in society. Yes, when practiced accordingly or the way it should be, often religion helps unite different races, different genders, different social standings, and gives people a sense of community. That is definitely the major reason why I really enjoyed that last church we went to with my mother. That was actually our second time going there, is that I loved seeing so many different people people of every racial background. I mean, there were white people from different parts of the world. There were Africans, there were Asians from
from all over the world. Sitting in front of me were East African. Sitting, you know, behind me were a Japanese couple. I mean, there were just people from all over the world united in a common faith or in a common, you know, sense of worship. And I just absolutely love that. In fact, I just felt like, wow, if I die and go to heaven, this is what I want it to look like. Like, I want to see everyone represented because, you know, God belongs to all of us. And all of us can be good people and love one another. Recently, I was having a discussion with Kenton about how the culture seems to be shifting and not necessarily in the best way, but specifically about religion and young people and how it's hard to understand, at least from my point of view, why so many young people don't appear to value some of the thing, things that we did. And maybe we're just getting old. But anyway, no, seriously, um, many people here consider themselves religiously unaffiliated. You might be one of them. Comment below if, you know, if that's you. Uh, but yeah, religiously unaffiliated. So less people again are going to church and I want to understand why. He reminded me that a lot of young smart people associate the church with negative thoughts or negative feelings. They don't really prefer organized religion and think of it as a negative thing and that the church is partially to blame for this. I was a little bit taken back like what? The church is to blame? But yeah, if you really give it some thought, think about how many young people have grown up living in an era where, you know, social media and mega churches and flashy pastors with big churches and nice cars and corporate greed, putting religious concerts on instead of sermons, uh, swindling money. A lot of that, you know, when you think of the church nowadays is what's going on. So there's definitely a lack of trust when it comes to churches and preachers in our society right now. Nowadays, when you think of church, you no longer think of the small community church that is there to actually serve the community, feeding the poor, running shelters, you know, running food pantries. Now churches are replaced by these large corporate organizations that are simply there to take your money, or at least that's how it feels to many of the young people who no longer relate, you know? And then there's the issue that some of these churches honestly just feel like clubs segregated by race or class and not really a reflection of the community. So I can see how young people and even the old people just don't feel like they can relate anymore to the message or lack of message um, and service that these churches are offering. Another reason why some young people have strayed away from the church or religion is many of these churches nowadays are affiliated with political parties. So can you imagine if you're in church and a certain agenda is being pushed that you might not necessarily agree with? So yeah, that's a reason too. Besides not being focused on service, many of the churches today are not focused on the causes that a lot of these young people care about, like social justice, women's rights, minority rights, immigrant rights, abortion rights, trans or gay rights. Now, I'm not saying that the church needs to support all of these causes. I am just saying that when some of these young people support these causes and they go to church and the church is not in line with their values or is not fighting for the rights that they believe, you know, should be addressed, they are less likely to attend or want to be involved. As you know, certain subjects like trans rights or gay rights or abortion rights can be very polarizing and people get very emotional about it. Now, I'm not here to judge you on where you stand, um, but I will say that majority of the major religions do not necessarily support um, some of these issues or are disapproving or in some cases, extremely intolerant, right? So it's understandable that so many of our younger generation feels disconnected from the church. 
at least from the traditional churches or traditional places of worship. Again, I am not saying that these places of worship need to align with the values of some of these young people. I'm not saying that at all. I am just saying that it is understandable that when some of these younger people or even older people that feel like their social causes and uh, social justice issues are not being addressed by the church, they're more likely to leave just like people who leave their job because they feel like the organization does not reflect their values or is not defending them. So again, I can understand. Now, I just wanted to say I really appreciate you if you have listened this far. Really, really appreciate you for allowing me to vent. And I hope that it inspires some conversation among your friends or with family uh, members. But before you go, I have a serious question for real. Do you think that the church in the United States, and again, when I say church, I just mean religion as a whole, even though those two things are completely different, but whatever faith that you follow, do you think that organized religion can continue to survive in the United States, considering so many groups feel like they, these organized religions are intolerant to their causes or not listening or not supporting their causes? What do you think? I'm really curious to know what you think. And then on the other side, do you think the secular side that wants to restrict religion can coexist or find a balance with the religious side that wants more religion introduced into our society? What do you think? Anyway, I also want to end with, I am not a perfect person. I am not a perfect person. I have flaws. I have sinned. I will continue to sin, likely. <laughs> but I truly love God, and I want to do better as a person. And I am just concerned, um, in general, where we are heading. And... Um, yeah, so that was the inspiration for this. And again, I thank God that my family and I were able to actually get to church for once after so many years. God bless you and thank you so much for watching. And I really, really love and appreciate every one of you for putting the time in to really listen to what I'm saying. Bye. Bless you. <laughs> See, this is kind of going uphill, so I'm not going to roll and hurt myself now keep in mind i have not driven driven run, ridden a bike in years probably not since the kids were babies what am i doing with the one leg okay here we go here we go and she's off <laughs>